Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, continuing with lecture 2 of our course principle of real estate management, uh, today we will be discussing about residential properties and shopping center. Types of real estate, there are multiple types in which specifically in this particular uh, session we will be discussing these topics. In the next session after this we will be continuing with type of real estate and in that we will take the further types. So, coming to table of content. So, in the table of content first we can see that uh, uh, what we will be uh, covering in this particular session. So, um, so uh, 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 like we will be like I said we will be focusing on residential real estate and shopping center exploring their unique characteristics and key aspects. In the left column uh, you can see we have residential uh, real estate uh, examining uh, its various aspects such as market trends, financing options, legal consideration, investment opportunities and future outlook. With a specific focus uh, we will have on the Indian market. Then transitioning to the right column you can see that we have a narrow focus uh, on the shopping centers uh, within the realm of commercial real estate. So, uh, here we will cover topics like property analysis, gross leasable area, tenant strategies, marketing management, trade area analysis, parking considerations and effective manage pra management practices for shopping centers. So, it is important to note that we will be discussing residential real estate and shopping centers in detail today. Other types of commercial properties will be explored in the next class. Throughout our discussion we will aim to provide insights and practical knowledge to help you understand the nonsense of these specific sectors and their significance in the real estate industry. Now, let us dive in. So, before we start let us just go back to what we have done in previous class. So, in previous class we have seen uh, what is real estate, uh, some basic concepts relating to real estate, uh, then what are the factors which affect real estate investment, then introduction to the real estate managers, evolution of real estate management and impact of key events on real estate. These topics were discussed in the last class and uh, uh, continuing with that uh, we will now discuss about the types of real estate. So, moving on to introduction. So, uh, first let us delve into the different types of real estate types which are available. One of them is uh, residential real estate which uh, in which we basically talk about uh, uh, the housing uh, independent housing units, the flats, the apartments and uh, there is a specific uh, processes, uh, there are certain specific investment styles, there are certain specific aspects of this type of uh, this type of uh, uh, property that is residential real estate. So, we will be uh, talking about this in detail and then the importance. The, the specific importance which ha it has uh, in the uh, Indian real estate market scenario. So, that also we will be covering. So, what we will be doing is that we will be covering global and Indian aspects and uh, we will see that how residential real estate has some specific requirements which needs to be uh, covered. So, uh, like I said we have different type of residential real estate. So, we have um, independent houses, we have apartments, we have villas. Uh, we have plot land and we have gated communities. So, uh, let us talk about them individually. So, independent houses, so independent houses also known as single family homes uh, are standalone structures designed to accommodate one family. These houses offer the utmost privacy and autonomy providing residents with exclusive ownership of both the dwelling and the land it sits on. Typically independent houses features a yard or garden space, multiple bedrooms, dedicated parking facilities, prospective to 
prospective buyers often seek independent houses for the sense of space, freedom and customize the offer. However, maintenance, responsibility are higher upfront cost are factors to consider. Then we come to apartments. Apartments or flats are multi-unit residential buildings comprising individual units or dwelling stacked vertically. Each apartment typically configures including studio, one bedroom, two bedroom and three bedroom units catering to diverse household sizes and preferences. Residents uh, benefit from shared maintenance responsibility, security features and common amenities. However, limited privacy and space constraints may be pointed uh, potential drawbacks for some individuals. Villas. Villas are luxurious, standalone residences characterized by spacious layouts, upscale amenities and premium finishes. These grand properties often feature expansive gardens, private pools and high-end architectural design, catering to affluent homeowners seeking exclusive and elegance. Villas offer epitome of luxury living with ample spaces for indoor-outdoor entertainment, relaxation and leisure. However, their high purchase price, maintenance cost and limited availability in prime locations may pose challenge for prospective buyers. Then we have plot lands. Plot or land parcels represent underdeveloped or vacant tracts of land available for residential construction or investment purposes. These parcels vary in size, location, zoning regulations and development potential, offering buyers a blank canvas to build their dream house or undertake real estate development projects. Plots serve as the foundation for future residential development, offering flexibility in design, construction and land use. However, challenges such as regular regulatory approvals, infrastructure requirements and market uncertainties must be carefully navigated by investors and developers. Then we also have gated communities. Now, gated communities are residential developments characterized by sec secure parameters, controlled access points and share amenities within a managed environment. These uh, communities offer res residents a safe, exclusive and well-maintained living environment often featuring amenities such as parks, playgrounds, swimming pools and recreational facilities. However, higher maintenance cost, strict regulation and potential conflict over governance may arise within the gated communities. In conclusion, understanding the various types of residential real estate is essential for prospective home buyers, investors and developers navigating the housing market. Each property type offers unique advantage and considerations. So, Let's move on to the, the next part, which is residential real estate market trends. Now, we have certain specific aspects which affect residential real estate markets. So we have economic growth, which is impacting this market. Then we have population growth, which is impacting this market. We have government policies, which are impacting these markets. And then we have infrastructure development requirements, specifically that also very much impact this area. So we'll take each point and understand how they are impacting the real estate market and how they are creating trends in these markets. So economic growth. So economic growth serve as a fundamental driver of demand for residential real estate worldwide. As economies expand, income rise, urbanization accelerate and consumer confidence strengthens leading to increased demand for housing. Robust economic growth fosters a conclusive environment for residential real estate investments, attracting both domestic and international investors, seeking opportunities for capital appreciation and rental income. Economic indicator such as GDP growth, employment rates and household income play a pivotal role in shaping housing affordability, consumer sentiment and purchasing power in real estate market across the globe. Population growth. Population growth is key determinant of housing demand globally, influencing market dynamics, housing preferences and urbanization trends. With the world's population continually growing, there is a perpetual need for residential properties to accommodate new households, urban migrants and demographic shifts. This can also be applied to Indian market that we very well know our increasing population requirements. We have our own specific uh, pressures and uh, importance of real uh, residential real estate is nonetheless very uh, cannot be um, 
um, overlooked and uh, special requirements are there for Indian market. Then we have government policies and regulations. So government policies and regulations have a significant impact on residential real estate market worldwide, shaping industry dynamics, market transparency and consumer protection standards. Regulatory frameworks such as real estate licensing laws, zoning regulations, building codes and consumer protection measures vary across jurisdiction and influence market practices, transaction processes and developer consumer relations. Policy is aimed at promoting affordability, sustainability and inclusivity in housing as well as measures to regulate real estate transactions, mitigate risk, contribute to market stability and investor confidence. Then we come to infrastructure development. Infrastructure development initiatives are instrumental in driving resident, residential real estate markets globally, enhancing connectivity, accessibility and livability in urban and peri-urban areas. Then we have investments in transportation networks, public utilities, amenities and urban infrastructure projects, stimulate economic growth, improve quality of infrastructure development, uh, increase the attractiveness of residential properties in well-connected locations. Infrastructure development also supports urbanization trends, business expansion and create employment opportunities, driving demand for housing and investment in real estate market worldwide. In summary, these residential real estate market trends which are economic growth, population growth, government policies and regulations and infrastructure development are these universal factors that influence housing market dynamics, investment opportunities and consumer behavior across diverse geographical regions and market. Understanding these trends is essential for stakeholders in the real estate industry to navigate opportunities and challenge effectively on the global scale. Coming to the re residential real estate trends in India. Now we have just looked upon uh, these factors through the global lens. The, the globally economic um, factors are there, the globally population factors are there, globally we have seen infrastructure demand. Now all these also apply to India, but there are certain specific features which are India uh, specific and we have to understand these uh, points to, uh, through Indian lens also. Because like I said earlier in the first uh, class that real estate is a very uh, 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 local uh, policy driven market. A lot of uh, factors which are uh, there in the local market impacts real estate. So we have to understand both global and Indian implications. So coming to economic growth. So economic growth serve as a fundamental driver of demand for residential real estate in India, just as it does globally. Expanding economies in India lead to rising income, increase urbanization and improve purchasing power. These factors collectively contribute to a heightened demand for housing across various segments of the population. Population growth, India's population growth remains a pivotal factor in driving demand for residential real estate, particularly in densely populated urban areas. The continuous influx of people from rural to urban areas coupled with natural population growth underscores the pers persistent need for housing to accommodate the burgeoning uh, population. Then coming to government policies, specifically RERA. So government policies continue to play a crucial role in um, shaping re India's residential real estate market. The implementation of regulatory framework such as uh, with RERA regulation has become mandatory for developers, ensuring enhanced consumer confidence and re reducing project delays. Coming to infrastructure development, infrastructure development remains a significant influence in India's residential real estate landscape. Government investments in infrastructure projects include transportational network, metro rail systems, smart cities are pivotal in enhancing connectivity, accessibility and overall livability of the residential areas. These developments not only affect the investments but also spur economic growth and urbanization, thereby bolstering the demand for housing in both urban centers and peri-urban areas. In summary, these trends, economic growth, population growth, government policies such as RERA and infrastructure development continue to shape the dynamics of India's residential real estate market. Moving on to financing residential real estate. Now this is something which was, uh, this was something which 
was uh, very uh, briefly touched upon in the first lecture that when we come to a real estate investment, whether it is residential, commercial, they are very cost uh, intensive uh, ventures which require a lot of, um, a lot of uh, um, financial input from uh, the buyers. Now, when we are saying that, we must also understand that uh, residential real estate uh, is something which is generally done by people to uh, facilitate their uh, housing. That is, they, they, their families, they want to facilitate their uh, housing uh, facilities. So, uh, it's, uh, when we, it comes to uh, um, uh, owning uh, real estate, uh, it, it's, it's, though it is expensive, it is a requirement, uh, essential need. And that is why financing come into uh, a very important role in this particular segment. So, understanding financing residential real estate is important. So, how we have to do that? So, we have mortgage options. So, mortgages are one of the most common financing method for purchasing residential properties. They enable individuals to borrow funds from financial institutions such as banks or mortgage lenders to buy a home while repaying the loan over an extended period. These are various type of mortgage options which are available, each with its own terms like interest rate and repayment structures. We have fixed rate mortgages, offer a stable interest rate throughout market condition, offering the potential for lower initial payment. Similarly, we have uh, other specialized mortgage options such as um, government backed loans. So, basically uh, that is how there are different uh, mortgage options. Uh, we will be uh, covering uh, them uh, uh, in deeply. Uh, but right now we can understand that there are multiple mortgage options and uh, which are available to uh, buyers of real estate. Then we have down payment requirements. One of the critical uh, component of obtaining a mortgage is down payment, which is an initial payment made by the buyers towards the purchase price of the property. Down payment requirements vary depending on factors such as the type of mortgage, loan amount and lenders policies. Generally, lender require buyers to contribute a percentage of the homer's, ho home purchase price as a down payment, with typical down payment percentage ranging from 3 percent to 20 percent or more. A higher down payment often results in lowering monthly mortgage payments, reduced interest cost over the, lo uh, over the loan term and may even eliminate the need for uh, some private uh, mortgage insurances. However, saving for larger down payment can be a significant financial challenge for many prospective home buyers and we have to understand that, like I said earlier. So, moving on uh, specifically to financial, financing residential real estate in India. So, similarly uh, at the global scale, we have to also understand the Indian uh, market. So, talking about Indian market, so we have home loans. So, home loans also known as housing loan are the primary financing options for purchasing residential properties in India. Similar to mortgage options globally, home loans enable individuals to borrow funds from banks, housing finance companies or other financial institutions to buy a home. Home loans in India typically offer flexible repayment terms ranging from several years to several decades depending on the borrower's preference and financial capacity. These loans may be secured by property being purchased, providing collateral to the lender in case of default. Home loan eligibility criteria in, in India often consider factors such as borrower's income, credit history, employment stability and the property's value. Prospective home buyers in India can choose from various type of home loan products offered by banks and financial institutions, each with its own features, interest rate and repayment structure. Interest rate. Interest rate on home loans play a crucial role in determining the affordability of residential properties in India. Home loan interest rate in India may be fixed or floating depending on the type of loan and prevailing market conditions. Fixed rate home loan offers stability and predictability with the interest may be fixed or floating depending. So, uh, in contrast, uh, floating rate home loans are linked to benchmark interest rate such as the Reserve Bank of India's repo rate and may fluctuate periodically. So, we have fixed rate, we have floating rate. So, we have multiple options. Then we come to Government schemes. The Indian government has introduced several schemes and initiatives to promote affordable housing and home ownership, provided with goal of providing housing for all. We have PMI offer financial assistance in terms of interest subsidies. 
on home loan to eligible beneficiaries including economically weak, weaker section, low income group, LIG and middle income group that is MIG. The scheme aims to make home ownership more accessible and affordable for individuals belonging to these income categories, thereby addressing the housing needs of millions of Indian families. Understanding government schemes such as PMAY and leveraging available benefits can significantly reduce the financial burden of purchasing a home and facilitating home ownership for eligible individuals and families in India. Moving on, we have certain legal aspects which we have to take care when we talk about residential real estate. Now what are these uh, legal aspects? So we are talking about property laws, we are talking about contracts, we are talking about regulations. So understanding legal aspect because I said like there are certain specific aspects of real estate whether it is residential, commercial, uh, for all of them. So specifically talking about residential, we are saying that we have certain specific property laws which we need to adhere to. There are certain uh, contracts which are there between the different parties involved in purchase and selling of residential real estate. We have to be very careful of that. And then regulations relating to uh, the municipal area in where you are purchasing your residential real estate. Uh, the the state laws. So there have to be awareness of that. So these are some important aspects which we need to be aware of. So we will be now going through uh, them individually and deeply. So talking about property laws. So property law govern the ownership, transfer and use of real estate properties. Uh, these laws vary by jurisdiction but generally include regulations regarding property rights, land ownership and land use. Understanding property law is essential for buyers and sellers to ensure their transactions co comply with the legal requirements and that their rights to the property are adequately protected. Property laws also dictate procedures to property registration which is a critical step in transferring ownership and establishing legal titles to the property. Then we have contracts. The contracts play a pivotal role in residential real estate transaction serving as legally binding agreement between buyer and seller. A real estate contracts outline the term and conditions of the sale. So that has to be clearly understood. Now by, by entering into a well drafted contract, buyer and seller can minimize the risk of dispute and ensure that the transaction proceeds smoothly and in accordance with the law. Then regulations, regulations governing residential real estate transactions encompass a wide range of legal requirements imposed by government authorities and regulatory bodies. These regulations may include zoning laws, building codes, environmental regulation and consumer protection laws. Compliance with regulation is essential to ensure that properties are developed, marketed and sold in a safe, ethical and lawful manner. Regulatory compliance also helps protect the interest of buyers by ensuring the properties meet quality standards and that the developer adhere to fair and transparent business practices. Then moving on to legal aspects of residential real estate in India. So like I said, whatever things we or uh, rules which we read uh, or concepts which we read uh, for international market, we should also uh, see how they are being, uh, um, being uh, uh, applied in India, how they are being uh, perceived in India, how how the similar concepts are uh, impacting Indian markets because like I said it is uh, real estate market is uh, very much uh, um, um, impacted by certain specific conditions. So for example here we are talking about property laws. Uh, so in Indian terms we have to talk about registration act, stamp duty, uh, title verification, uh, regulatory framework. So we will now delve into each aspect specifically. So uh, property law, so Indian real estate is governed by various laws and regulations including registration act, stamp duty act which mandates the registration of property transaction and payment of stamp duty on property documents. These laws aims to ensure transparency, authenticity and legal validity in property transaction by requiring the registration of deeds, agreements and other legal documents related to real estate. Stamp duty is levied on property documents to authenticate transaction and generate revenue for the state government. Compliance with these laws is essential for ensuring the legality and enforceability of property transactions in India. 
Then we have title verification. Title verification is a crucial step in the property acquisition process in India, aimed at confirming the legal ownership of the property and identifying any encumbrance or defects in the title. Buyer must conduct thorough due diligence in to verify the titles of the uh, property by examining relevant legal issues, safeguarding buyer interest and protecting them from protein. Uh, these, these title verifications help uh, in mitigating the uh, risk of purchasing properties with disputed titles or legal issues, safeguarding buyer's interest. So that is very important, essential part of uh, this process, that is title verification. Then we have regulatory framework. India has implemented a regulatory framework to govern residential real estate transactions and protect the interest of buyers and investors. We have RERA that is Real Estate Regulation and Development Act, which was introduced in 2017, is a significant regulatory milestone aimed at promoting transparency, uh, accountability and consumer protection for real estate sector. RERA mandates the registration of real estate projects and real estate agents regulates, regulates project advertising and marketing practices and establishes mechanism for addressing grievances and disputes. Compliance with RERA regulation is mandatory for developers and real estate agents, ensuring greater transparency and accountability in property transactions and enhancing consumer confidence in the Indian real estate market. So understanding the regulatory framework is essential for all stakeholders involved in residential real estate transactions in India to ensure compliance with the legal requirement and uphold ethical standard in the industry. Moving on, we have investing in residential real estate in India. So we have rental yield potential, we have capital appreciation, we have tax implication. So these are some certain factors which uh, impact investing, investing in real estate, residential real estate in India. Why will any uh, person, uh, apart from somebody who wants to own real estate for their requirements, their need, if they want to invest, what are the specific aspects which are impacting that? So we are talking about rental yield, if they want to rent it out, the, the, uh, the money which they can earn through that. We are talking about capital appreciation, if they want to invest um, their uh, extra amount of money which is there with them and they want to earn uh, some interest on that. So uh, what is the chance that the, uh, the rise in the, uh, the cost of, uh, of the property which you have purchased? So that is one important aspect. And then we have tax implications. So what are the tax implications? Because sometimes there are certain rebates, there are certain specific uh, 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 rules which facilitate real estate purchase by government, specifically for uh, home ownership. So we'll delve into them individually. So, so talking about uh, rental yield potential, so residential properties offer the potential for generating steady rental income, rental yield potential, is influenced by factors such as property location, demand supply dynamic. Then we have prime locations, which have higher demand for rental. Housing typically offers competitive rental lead, especially in urban centers and areas with strong economic fundamentals. Then we have investors should conduct thorough market research um, to assess rental demand, vacancy rates and rental trends in the target area before committing a residential uh, before committing a residential property investment. Then additional prudent property management practices and tenant selections can enhance rental yield and ensure consistent cash flow from rental income. Then we have capital appreciation uh, aspect which is also important for residential real estate investment. So residential real estate investment also present the opportunity for capital appreciation over the long term driven by factors such as economic growth, infrastructure development and demographic trends. Properties located in high growth areas with strong fundamental tend to experience higher uh, rates of capital appreciation. Investors should adopt a long term investment horizon and exercise higher uh, uh, and exercise patience. So when this both combine, you get higher rates of capital appreciation over long term, then investors should uh, also look like uh, factors like property conditions, neighborhood desirability, proximity to amenities and overall market sentiment 
which play a significant role in determining the potential for capital appreciation. Then diversification across different geographical regions and property types which can help mitigate risk. Then we have tax implication. Understanding the tax implications of residential real estate investment is crucial. Uh, we have rental income that is generated from residential properties is typically subject to income tax. So that we have to keep in mind. So with reductions available for expenses such as property management, fees, maintenance cost and mortgage interest payments. So that is something which we can take into account when we are talking about tax implications. Then we have investors should familiarize themselves with local tax laws and consult with tax professionals or financial advisors to optimize tax efficiencies. Capital gain arising from sale of residential properties may also be subject to capital gain tax with rates varying based on factors such as holding uh, period and local tax regulations. Additionally, property taxes, stamp duty, registration fees may apply. So we have to look into account for all these factors when we are talking about investing in residential real estate. Now coming to the future outlook of residential real estate in India. So we are talking about certain specific trends which are visible in India. So for example, we are talking about urbanization. So urbanization in India, steady movement of people from rural to urban areas. We have different uh, assessments on time to time relating to population have been done and which clearly show that there has been a trend towards um, uh, um, a migration of people from rural to urban area. So urbanization is taking place when we are talking about uh, so many people coming up in cities, we will require specific residential units for them. So government have uh, taken some initiatives regarding the low cost housing. They have also um, made certain provisions regarding uh, facilitating uh, these type of housing for people. Uh, for, uh, um, for other, uh, for middle class, upper middle class, there are different uh, private sector initiatives which are being taken. So there are multiple ways which we have to look into this factor which will uh, of course uh, impact this area. Then we have technological integration. So we have seen that there have been a lot of technological changes taking place. So these technological integration relating to uh, buying and selling of real estate, whether it, it is subject to the real estate portals which are there, uh, online portals which are there. Uh, then we have uh, uh, certain um, uh, processes, uh, government processes which are uh, transferring from physical to uh, uh, online. So there are certain uh, specific things which are taking place in this area also. Then we have sustainability trends. So uh, when we talk about uh, our future, the green future uh, where we want to uh, safeguard our future generation, we know that uh, real estate uh, requires buildings. Building um, involve a lot of carbon emission. So that area and also the waste management. So there are multiple layers of sustainability relating to real estate, which has to be taken into consideration. This is also an important future trend which we cannot overlook. And then we have smart city initiatives, a specific um, uh, initiative taken by government to build uh, 100 smart cities. So that will also impact the future requirements of residential real estate. And all these multiple factors will have great impact uh, uh, on the future of the residential real estate market in India. So we have to look at um, uh, all of them and um, um, consider them while we are talking about residential real estate market in India. Then moving on to commercial real estate. So we have uh, just learned about the residential real estate. Now we'll be focusing on commercial real estate and first we will discuss what are what is commercial real estate. So um, uh, let's define it. So commercial real estate refers to properties that are used for businesses or income generating purposes rather than residential purposes. These properties include office buildings, retail spaces, industrial facilities, hotel, multifamily apartment buildings, uh, shopping centers. Yeah, so these are intended for rental income. Now why is commercial real estate important in the real estate market? So commercial properties play a crucial role uh, in driving economic activities and urban development. They serve as hubs for business operations, retail activities, manufacturing and hospitality services, contributing significant to job creation and local economies. 
Moreover, commercial real estate represents a substantial portion of the overall real estate market, attracting a diverse range of investors, developers, and tenants. The performance of commercial properties measured through factors like occupancy rates, rental income, and property values often reflect broader economic trends and investor sentiment. In summary, commercial real estate forms the backbone of modern cities and economies, providing space for businesses to thrive and communities to flourish. Understanding its definition and importance is essential for anyone involved in the real estate industry or seeking to invest in income generating properties. Moving on, we have types of commercial real estate. So before I um, talk about these types, I would uh, like to specifically point that now we will be in this particular lecture, we will be focusing only on shopping centers, retail spaces and uh, the other commercial uh, types like office building, industrial properties, uh, hospitality properties, mixed use development will be covered in the next uh, uh, session. In this session, we will be focusing on a specific type of commercial uh, real estate and that is shopping centers. So let's move on. So introduction to shopping centers. So shopping center represent vibrant and evolving spaces that cater to shifting consumer preferences and demographic needs. These centers continually adapt to meet the dynamic demands of shoppers, offering opportunities for development, renovation, and the introduction of innovative re retail concepts. Adapting to consumer needs, shopping centers are agile environments that respond to changing consumer behaviors, preferences, and lifestyle trends. The flexibility of shopping centers allow for implementation of real, uh, new retail formats, experimental offerings, and amenities to enhance the shopping experience, development, and renovation opportunities. The dynamic nature of shopping centers fosters the opportunity for development and renovation projects aimed at modernizing facilities, expanding retail offerings, and revitalizing outdated spaces. Redevelopment initiatives may include addition of entertainment venues, dining options, and mixed-use components to attract and retain visitors. Then complexity of management. Managing shopping centers involve navigating complexities similar to those encountered in managing office buildings. Challenges include negotiating longer lease terms, maintaining tenant relationships, and addressing operational issues to ensure the overall success and profitability of the center. Shopping centers then serve as a vibrant hubs of commerce and community, continuously adapting to meet the evolving needs of consumers. Effective management of these dynamic spaces require a keep keen understanding of consumer trends, proactive adaptation strategies, and strong tenant relationships to foster such uh, success in this particular area. Then, let's talk about the types of shopping centers. So, we are talking about regional malls which cater to medium-sized trade areas, typically anchored by department stores and offering a wide range of retail options. Then we have super regional malls. We have large centers with multiple um, uh, anchor tenants, extensive retail offerings. We have um, dining options, entertainment facilities. Then we have, uh, uh, we have open air centers. So open air centers, uh, which is third point here, which is uh, like which is serving local communities with mix of retail, grocery, and service-oriented business, um, community shopping centers, which are similar to neighborhood centers but larger in scale, offering a broad range of services and amenities. And then we have some convenience centers, which are comprising a row of retail stores, often with easy parking and convenient accesses. So, different type of open-air centers are there. And then we have, like we earlier discussed, we have super regional malls which have uh, large centers with multiple anchor tenants. So these are the different types of shopping centers. Apart from this, you will find that there are different other terminologies relating to shopping centers. But uh, you can say that basically when we try to classify, classification may vary from region to region, but this is a, a generalistic classification of shopping centers. Then coming to property analysis. So, Shopping centers are evaluated based on factors that cater to the needs and preferences of shoppers. Key considerations in property analysis include, we have merchandise variety, uh, we have the diversity and quality of retail offerings, play a crucial role in attracting shoppers and creating a vibrant shopping environment. Then we have 
trade area size, which is another important factor to be considered. So, understanding the demographic and purchasing power of the surrounding population helps assess the potential customer base and market demand. And then we have aesthetic appeal. The overall design, architecture and landscaping of the shopping center contributes to its attractiveness and appeal to shoppers. Then we have location that is accessibility and visibility from major roads and highways influence foot traffic and exposure to potential customers. Then we have accessibility that is ease of access for shoppers which include public transportation options, pedestrian walkways, enhanced convenience and encourage visitations. Then we have parking availability, sufficient parking capacity, well designed parking uh, facilities and convenience access to the stores are essential for customer convenience. Then we talk talking about amenities, additional features such as dining options, entertainment facilities, outdoor seating area and recreational spaces enhance the overall shopping experience. So that is there. So by analyzing these factors, property managers can identify strength and weaknesses and opportunities for improvement, allowing them to develop strategies to optimize the performance and appeal of the shopping center. Then we have gross leasable area. So gross leasable area serves as the primary metric for measuring retail space within a shopping center. Here's a breakdown of its key components. Definition. So first, GLA refers to the total floor area within a shopping center that is available for lease to tenants. This measurement includes not only the interior spaces of individual retail stores, but also the common area such as corridor, atriums, courtyards and parking lots. Then we have comprehensive coverage. So GLA provides a comprehensive view of the leasable space within the shopping center encompassing all areas where tenants operate their business and interact with customers. Then talking about calculations. So GLA is calculated by summing up the leasable area of all individual retail units within the shopping center along with any shared or common spaces that are available for tenant use. Importance. GLA serve as a fundamental metric for property managers, investors and tenants alike. It helps in assessing the overall size and capacity of the shopping centers, determining rental rates, evaluating tenant performance and planning for future expansion or redevelopment. Optimization. Property managers strive to maximize the utilization of GLA by attracting a diverse mix of high quality tenants, optimizing the layout and design of retail spaces and enhancing the overall shopping experience for customer. By understanding and effectively managing GLA shopping center, shareholders can make informed decisions to drive occupancy, revenue and long term successes in retail environment. Next, we discuss anchor tenants and ancillary tenants. So in the realm of shopping centers, both anchor tenants and ancillary tenants play a pivotal role in shaping the retail landscape. Here's a closer look at each. Anchor tenants. So anchor tenants, first the definition. Anchor tenants are prominent retailers that occupy a large strategically positioned spaces within a shopping center. These tenants typically include well-known department stores, grocery chains or major specialty retailers. We have what are the attractions of anchor tenants. So anchor tenants serve as a major uh, draw cards for shopping centers, attracting a significant volume of foot traffic and customers. Their presence can significantly influence consumer perceptions and contribute to overall success and vibrancy of the retail environment. The impact of anchor tenants. So beyond drawing customers, anchor tenants also set the tone and identity of the shopping center, often anchoring specific sections or wings. Their presence can instill confidence in other retail and contribute to the center's leasing appeal. So let's take one example. For example, in your city, in your town, you may have a certain specific mall in which a big retail chain is present. A big retail chain which is serving the grocery needs, the multiple other essential items which are required for your household. They are being sold in that big shop in that mall. So many times you will see because of that shop, which is the anchor tenant of that mall, the whole mall is being recognized. Sometimes people remember the shop name, but might forget the name of that mall. So that is the kind of influence anchor uh, tenants have. So then we have ancillary tenants. 
ancillary tenants also referred to as inline tenants lease smaller retail spaces within the shopping center typically surrounding or adjacent to anchor stores these tenants offer a diverse range of products or services that complement those of the anchor tenants uh, then we are talking about the complementarity of these anchor ancillary tenants so ancillary tenants play a crucial role in enhancing the shopping experience by providing additional options and variety to customers they often cater to specific niches or demographic filling gaps in the retail offering then we are talking about synergy the presence of ancillary tenant creates a synergistic environment within the shopping center where customers are encouraged to explore different stores and spend more time shopping their offerings can encourage repeat visits and foster a sense of community within the center we have then talking about leasing dynamics while ancillary tenants may occupy a smaller space their leasing arrangements are still significant for the overall success of the shopping centers property managers carefully curate the mix of ancillary tenants to ensure diversity tenant synergy and overall cohesiveness by strategically balancing the presence of anchor and ancillary tenants shopping center operators can create vibrant retail destinations that cater to a wide range of consumer preferences and drive sustained successes in the competitive retail landscape then we are talking about marketing and management strategies so shopping centers employ uh, various marketing and management strategies we will have to understand that when we are talking about shopping centers we just not talked about ancillary we talked about the anchor tenants so we have to have certain balance amongst them also how the mall is perceived in that area that is very important so certain activities have to be conducted time to time certain uh, film star certain uh, celebrities have to visit malls time to time there have to be some cultural events time to time so all this which we see in our nearby mall why it is happening it is a marketing initiative of that mall they want to create their presence so now we will be discussing about their, those management strategies so in the dynamic world of retail shopping centers deploy a diverse array of marketing and management strategies so we have tenant mix optimization so we have strategic selection careful selection of anchor and ancillary tenant to create a well rounded mix that appeal to target demographic and shopping preferences regular assessments continuous evaluation of tenant performance and market trends to adopt the mix as needed ensuring relevance and appeal customer experience enhancement we have amenities and facilities offering amenities such as seating area restrooms wifi and children play areas to enhance comfort events and entertainment hosting events live performance and seasonal celebrations to create a vibrant atmosphere and drive foot traffic we have marketing promotions we have digital marketing so we have utilizing social media email campaigns and targeted online advertising to reach and engage customers to promote sales and events and build brand loyalty we have traditional advertising employing traditional channels such as print ads billboards and radio to reach local audiences and drive awareness we have community engagements we have local partnerships lo collaboration with local businesses organizations community groups to sponsor events fundraisers and initiative that foster sense of belonging and support sustainability initiatives implementing eco friendly practices such as recycling programs or green initiative to resonate with environmental uh, conscious consumer and demonstrate corporate social responsibility we have technological integration digital signage and wayfinding implementing digital signages and interactive wayfinding systems to enhance navigating and providing real time information on promotions events and store locations mobile apps developer developing mobile mobile apps that offer features such as store directions personalized offers mobile payment and loyalty programs to streamline the shopping experience and foster cu customer engagement we have customer feedback and engagement we can have surveys and feedback loops collecting customer feedback through surveys focus groups and online reviews to gain insights into preferences concerns and satisfaction level then we are talking about responsive uh, customer service 
providing responsive customer service and addressing issues promptly to build trust and loyalty among shoppers by employing a strategic blend of these marketing and management strategies. Shopping centers can create engaging customer centering environment that drive foot traffic, encourage spending and cultivating long term success in the competitive retail landscape. Then we move on to the next one which is trade area analysis. Trade area analysis is a vital component of understanding the market dynamic and customer base of a shopping center. Let us have an overview. First, the definition, the trade area refers to the geographical region form which the shopping center attracts its customers. It include the surrounding neighborhood, communities and regions where shoppers reside. Demographic profile, demographic analysis examine the population characteristics of the trade area, population size, density, age distribution, household income level, education level, ethnicity and cultural diversity. This data helps identify target customer demographic and their purchasing power. Psychological pro psychographic profile. So, what is psychographic profile? So, psychographic analysis delve into the lifestyle preferences, values, interest and behavior of the target market. Factors such as consumer preference and shopping habits, lifestyle choice and aspirations, media consumption patterns, brand affinities and consumer trends. Understanding uh, in tailoring market uh, and understanding of this helps in tailoring marketing strategies and tenant selection to restore uh, uh, to, to restore and resonate with the target audiences. Then we have marketing potential. Assessing market potential involves estimating the demand for goods and services within the trade area. Factors such as income level, population growth projections and consumer preferences influence market potential. This analysis helps determine the viability and growth prospects of the shopping center in its market uh, context. Then we are talking about competitive landscape. Analyzing competitive landscape involves identifying existing retail offerings and competi competition shopping centers with the trade areas. It assesses strength, weaknesses and opportunities and threat posed by the competition. Then access and transportation, Eval evaluating uh, access and transportation infrastructure is crucial for understanding how customers travel to the shopping center. Growth trend, examining growth trend involving forecasting population changes. So, there are so many factors which needs to be looked into when we are talking about trade analysis and that is why it is very important for managers to look at. Moving on to uh, the factors, so we have just now very much discussed that what are the different factors ranging from aesthetic, then location, the accessibility, parking availability. All these factors play a very crucial role in uh, influencing the trade area. So, that also we have to take into account. Then parking consideration. So, parking is also a very essential uh, topic because parking must be convenient. Uh, it should be ample with the ratio based on we have gross leasable area and local zoning ordinances. So, that also we need to take into account. Then managing shopping centers. So, we have just now looked at how what are the various factors which are affecting. So, we have to take into account all these factors while we are managing shopping centers. So, uh, apart from this safety and security is also another essential uh, important factor which needs to be uh, taken care when we are talking about managing the shopping centers. So, these factors which we have just discussed in this lecture and also certain uh, safety requirements which need to be placed for proper management of shopping centers. And in this um, uh, session we have covered both residential and uh, shopping centers. We have looked at various features relating to residential uh, real estate market and we have also looked at the uh, shopping centers and what are the various facets of the shopping center management. So, uh, in the next class we will be discussing about the other commercial real estate types which will include office, industrial, hospitality and we will specifically discuss office, uh, uh, office commercial buildings. So, thank you.